so we, we will discuss the practical problems that are connected with the mass production of geopolymer cement. We have seen that we must get rid of the pH and produce an irritant and not a corrosive system, which means user-friendly system and not a user-hostile system. What is to understand between hostile and friendly is shown on uh, this table on the left the hostile system comprises quicklime, NaOH, KOH, sodium metasilicate with the SiO2 Na2O ratio of 1, and any soluble silicate with a molar ratio lower than 1.45. On the right, the user friendly system comprises slake lime, Portland cement, iron slag. A slurry that contains silicate and kaolin, for example, or other uh, colloid uh, protective uh, ingredients and that provides uh, a molar ratio between 1.25 and 1.45 and, of course, any soluble silicate that have a molar ratio higher than 1.45. In 1999, I visited China. Uh, on, uh, I was invited by the Academy of Science at Beijing, and I met with uh, several representatives of the Ministry of the Building Industry in China, and we discussed uh, uh, the potential applications of geopolymer cement. Uh, and I asked uh, the uh, Vice Minister what would be uh, the first use of geopolymer cement? He told me, no problem, roads. What quantities do you figure? 100 million tons of geopolymer cement. 100 million tons. So I started to calculate. If I use our rock-based system or flyage-based system or anything like that, and I just use 10% of silicate, this means 10 million tons of silicate. You guys from the uh, soluble silicate industry, are you ready to produce 10 million tons per year? No. Okay. So in, uh, we have seen that, uh, so it is only 100 million tons. So we have a big problem for mass production. And uh, <laughs> it's obvious that we did not have the answer. For the world, 2015, it is 1,000 million tons. How can we get this? These 100 million tons of silicate? Impossible. With a regular way of making silicate, even sodium or potassium. Because what is the problem here? We'll discuss it later. So we have two key issues in order for mass production. We have to think in terms of millions of tons. We need to have the aluminosilicate material in great quantities. And these are must be rock based geology, coal tailings, Fly ashes, fine. And we have to have the alkali system that is working. Remember, we are making a user-friendly system, which requires, which cannot only be achieved when we start with silicates and not with pure alkali. Otherwise, it is a user-hostile. So we know we have Metacarolin slake based, based, rock based, and fly ash based, so far three systems. The uh, metacarolin slag based geopolymer cement, I showed you uh, the, two, uh, the three examples where we have a low content of kaolinite 
and provide, even with 33% of carlinite, strength as high as 70 MPa. So we have a geological material that is providing a cement with a low quantity of alkali silicate. Rock-based cement, geopolymer cement, is more interesting. For example, if we take the coal waste tailings from China, we tested the coal waste tailing from China, it works perfectly. And here we tested the coal waste tailing from Wales in the UK. It is made of uh, plagioclast, 25%, 30% of quartz, 10% of amphibole, 27% of carlinite, 3 to 5% of coal, and 6% of other elements, it could be uh, Moscovite and so forth. We consigned it at, three, uh, at 750 degrees C for three hours in order to get the carlinate into metacarlin. We grind it at 15 to 25 microns and the coal is supplying part of the needed energy. So this is something that is very sustainable and economically feasible provided you make the cement where you have the coal mining waste and your supplier or your end user are also close to other coal minings. Otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, the economics in terms of CO2 emissions is no longer there if you have to carry uh, to, to ship uh, the cement overseas and so forth. So we made the uh, following mixture which is a uh, characteristic of one mix could be changed uh, depending on the coal waste uh, tiny. Uh, 80 uh, parts of coal mining waste, uh, 20 parts of slag, uh, 20 parts of uh, potassium silicate uh, 0 0.40 molar ratio, 43% concentrate uh, H2O, that is 47% uh, concentration, and we add 20 water. Curing at uh, 7 days 30 MPa, at, 20 and at 28 days 75 MPa. That is too much anyway, which means we may reduce the quantity of alkali anyway. Uh, so this is the coal mining waste and I show you one specimen that Oleg knows very perfectly. This is the one <laughs> in the Czech Republic. This is the natural occurring calcined material, that is the coal mining waste. It happened that when we were there it was freezing, not like today where it is just the opposite. And uh, this is the material that is available that we don't have to calcine at all and that has only to be ground, grown and so forth. And this is the sample here. Uh, for this rock-based cement, geopolymer cement type, we filed for patents that has been uh, uh, delivered uh, in several countries and it is available through my partners that are in London. Fly ash-based geopolymer cement, this is another way of coping with the uh, raw materials, with the silicate, so either the geology, if you don't have the geology then you look at the waste that uh, is available and fly ash is a byproduct that is uh, always there or increasing in fact depending on the quality of the fly ash as we have seen uh, the fly ash quality depends on the uh, temperature of the boiling temperature of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the boiler the uh, temperature, the higher the temperature, the better the fly ash, which means that with time we'll get, all, we'll get more and more better fly ash feasible for geopolymeric reaction. You must imagine that there is a big difference between a uh, fly ash that is uh, fired at 1200 degrees C and the one that is fired at 1600 degrees C. Uh, even with a, a, a high calcium content at 15 or 1600 degrees C, you no longer have free calcium 
that uh, destroy or flash set with our system. But you have a calcium silicon aluminate that is no longer uh, reactive uh, in the boiler, but will in the mix in the mixture, but uh, will is available as a fly ash material. Uh, the fly ash mixture, uh, depending on uh, the nature of the fly ash, uh, the mix uh, that is uh, here was only characterized uh, to provide the better rheology. Rheology, the lower amount of water and uh, the higher fluidity. These were the two criterion for the selection of the formulae. And we get several uh, different uh, strength that has developed, that is the one that get uh, 35 or 40 MPA has not been optimized in order to get more. Uh, the only criterion was the good rheology, period. Uh, and this is dependent on how it is mixed and so forth. And this is sometimes very strange, very interesting. We have uh, super uh, thick Tixotropical mixture, tixotropic, that no longer move, and as soon as they are in rotation, they are superfluid. So it is uh, it is uh, a behavior that uh, one has to be accustomed to. So fly ash 50 to 80 part, 10 percent slag. So as when I tell, I'm telling you that the slag is a chemical, this is. Uh, the, the proof here, we only add the slag so that it st be st start uh, the alkalination and uh, degradate and depolymerize in order to enter into the system. As you've seen, we don't have metacarline here. Uh, this has been done uh, in order to get uh, the best result of the class fly ash, class F fly ash, but it is a system that cannot be used as it is for waste management because it is not as long-term stable as the one that contains metacarline. It is a material for buildings application, period. And all those who are making studies with fly ash uh, for waste containment and so forth are, going, are doing wrong research uh, because this is not the way to do it. Um, uh, it is a building material and that's all. Or you want to make out of the fly ash a zeolite. Then you enter into the user hostile system. You need a lot of alkali and you make your zeolite. But this is a different topic. We are not making a building materials. We are manufacturing zeolites. So these are motor strengths? Pardon? These strengths are motor, motor strengths. One is to keep up sand. The strength, how is it measured? The, st the strength, yes, the, you remember the, 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 the graph? And for the fly ash, we had 40 MPA up to uh, 100 MPA. For the cement? This is the cement, it's the pure material. Pure material, no, no sand added, nothing. It is the paste. We always crush the paste when we demold it we don't dry it, we crush it when from, with the mold, from the mold after two days, seven days, 15 days, 28 days, and this is the way we compare our results. It is not standard, but it is the way we do it. It is for comparison. These are not absolute values, these are relative values to compare with. Well, we are comparing 40. 200, this is in the, always the same conditions. And the people at uh, University of Delft in Netherlands, they were, they were, they were, they were better than our lab. They have always something above 100 MPA. And they were, they were very proud to have done it better than we were doing. They were replicating it. Their molds were better. All the system was better than what we were doing in our lab. But uh, so they ne never got below 100 with uh, their fly ash. Um, so ambient temperature hardening. So you see we have a small amount of water 
a small amount of uh, the water ratio uh, practically is we add 20 of water and 10 of potassium silicate that contain 50-50 that is 25 part of water 10 parts and 50 to 80 sometimes 70 80 of the slag Uh, this is also the patent that has been published in uh, 2008 related to the user-friendly ratios used for fly ash based geopolymer cement. This is also a patent that is uh, <coughs> on the way of being uh, issued in several countries and uh, it is available for exploitation. So, you remember we said we have two key issues in order to tackle the issue, to the, the problem, to tackle the problem of mass production. Millions of tons, the bulk silico aluminate material is easy to, to get, but the alkali silicate system is not easy to get. Uh, when I'm telling you that the uh, silicate industry is not capable of manufacturing it, with the regular process. Theoretically, to make sodium silicate, you start to manufacture sodium hydroxide by electrolysis of sodium chloride. So you get NOH and you get chlorine. So what do you do? What do you do? What do you do with the chlorine? Oh, fine, we make PVC, PVC, plastic. Nobody wants any more PVC. So what do you do with the chlorine? Nothing. So you must to invent a system where you don't have any chlorine produced, either through uh, 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 inverse osmosis or any fine. So this is a problem. We need the sodium, but we don't want the chlorine. What do you do with the chlorine? So they, they cannot manufacture the silicate that we need. We want potassium, forget it, millions of tons, they cannot. And even the sodium is dangerous in terms of environmental issues. So the alkali system is the main issue. This is where the major effort has to be concentrated in the near future for the next five years. This is mandatory. This is what has to be done. So first, to find a way of manufacturing these uh, ingredients. And second, to find a way of doing this in a powder form, so that you only get uh, the uh, soluble silicate when you add the water in it, and remaining user-friendly. And this is... Uh, what uh, is done, what we have tried to do. Uh, this is also what uh, the people at Melbourne are claiming to have done, but in fact it is not. Uh, I don't want to discuss uh, their technology, we can uh, discuss it uh, privately. Uh, the best way is to read uh, their patents and uh, you have everything, this is available. You go uh, and uh, look at their patents and you understand uh, their technology. So we have to make a system in powder form that will supply in the mix a low pH, a user-friendly system. I don't, want a syst I don't want a powder form that is made of NOH, powdered, or metasilicate molar ratio 1 to 1. I want something that has a molar ratio of 1.4, 1.5. The system that we have experienced is what I called the artificial basalt, which is a, could be a alkaline slag. Instead of having calcium slag, we have alkali slag, and from a geological point of view, it is a basalt. Uh, 
This is in the chapter 24 in my book, and I sum up it uh, very uh, briefly. So we manufacture a basalt at 1200 degrees C, 1250 degrees C, or 1300 degrees C. That is to say the temperature of uh, uh, that uh, the, uh, the silicate uh, uh, manufacturers are accustomed to and do, uh, through the furnace route. We don't change anything. Just the raw material is different. Uh, we take uh, this basalt that we uh, synthesized at 1250 degrees C. Uh, here, this is uh, LA040. Uh, this was uh, 1300. And the, the chart here is uh, the percentage of replacement replacement of potassium silicate. Here we replace 100% and here we have the total potassium silicate and so. First you see that if we don't have soluble silicate at the beginning we have no strength. So we need so far today. Uh, this study has been done 10 years ago in the lab. Yes? Are you, we, this is our regular potassium silicate that we are using, and we are replacing the potassium silicate with uh, the artificial basalt. Okay? So, if it is 100% uh, uh, artificial basalt, it doesn't work. Which means our basalt must be activated. So, I agree, this is our alkali activation of the basalt so that it starts to react, it starts the chemistry. And uh, up to now, we need to add a small amount of potassium silicate. So instead of having 10% of the bulk, we only have 2%. We, this is uh, better, the, 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 the amount uh, 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 we did not, uh, this, is just, this is just a study, it is not uh, the result of something of an industrial process. It is just a way to show that this is possible. So we have here zero replacement, we start with 50 MPa, 8 days, as, as usual 10%, 20%, you always have a maximum when you add something to your system. This is something that we experience always. And if we replace 60%, we still have 40, around 40 MP at 8 days. And even if we replace 80%, we are 25 to 30 MPa. This is enough. So we get the strength at, 20, at 28 days, depending on the geological raw material that was used to make uh, this basalt. These are uh, geological material that contains naturally a very high amount of potassium in it. These are volcanic tufts that have up to 10% by weight of K2O and a certain amount of Na2O also. So this is, we select uh, the geology in order to get the maximum of potassium in our system. And you see at 8 days when you have 30 MPa for the LA01, this is a volcanic tuff uh, up north of Rome in Italy, whereas the GC it is uh, from uh, the Grand Canary Island volcanic tuff. Uh, we achieve at 8 day 30 MPa and more than 45 at 30 days. So this is a good material. How is it manufactured? Uh, this is a, a system, which is what it is. Here we make the glass, the basalt, take the volcanic tuff, we add the additives, calcium, sodium, potassium, in order to get the right formulae that we uh, want. We grind, we vitrify, we quench, and we have the alkaline glass, 
and we grind. And we say, oh well, since uh, we need uh, the heat here, why not take the heat to calcine the carlin to make metacarlin? This is just a suggestion, it is not mandatory. But you see, this is uh, practically the same way of making the silicate today. Only uh, the raw materials are changing and the quantities will be totally different. <clears throat> there is another way to cope with the diminution of CO2. So this was the one and we get uh, 70 to 80 percent CO2 reduction. Here, if we go back to the old Roman cement, that is a geopolymer cement, we can achieve a reduction of 60%. That is the best Roman cement. The Roman engineers achieved a cement, the Roman concrete and the Roman cement that emits 60% less CO2 than Portland cement. And you know that uh, the properties of this Roman cement are good, the monuments are still there. Uh, here we have, we, this is the Opus Signinum. The Opus Signinum is a system that is exactly the replication of the metacarlin based geopolymer. We have what we call the testar, this is uh, uh, the metacarlin uh, spectrum, silicon, and this is the cement that we get. Or another one, this is the Opus Testacheum, this is another type of uh, cement, this is a regular pozzolanic cement, but the right one with the right pozzoline, which is called Cretony in Italian. It has uh, these spectrum and we find inside uh, the spectrum of the Cretony that is in fact it contains natural zeolite and in that type it is a potassium zeolite. Philipsid based. And this is this one that will promote the making of the Roman cement. So we have uh, a system that could be used and the only problem is to accelerate the hardening of the Roman cement. The Roman cement is the Pozzolanic cement. It takes more time to harden than the Portland cement or the geopolymer cement. So we have to find ways to accelerate it and doing it uh, we save 60% of CO2 emission. Um. So we have the alternative market for the cement industry, uh, the manufacture of artificial basalt. This could be done by the cement industry or could be done by the silicate industry, either choice PQ can decide we will enter into the manufacture of artificial basalt and provide the millions of tons that, we, that is needed or Holcim and so forth will decide we manufacture it. This is close to what we are doing and it is close to uh, the making of slag. If it is necessary to manufacture slag and this basalt, uh, this is the same equipment. We have to manufacture slags, this is also a chemical, and we have to manufacture and improve the Roman cement. So this is uh, the target that I am setting for uh, the next five years and we hope to achieve everything provided we don't work alone, provided that uh, the industry and the uh, uh, governmental uh, institutions are aware of the system and help us to develop uh, these technologies. So I'm finished for today, I'm ready for discussion and I hope uh, that you understood the message that I want to promote. We have solutions but it requires a lot of brain and a lot of development, innovation and implementation. Thank you.